So good morning again. This morning uh, we'll finish up the uh, last lesson in this quarter's book, and next week we'll be into a, a, a new lesson. But today is uh, it's actually called the Pentecostal Experience, and uh, uh, this is going to cover everything we're talking about today is in the book of Acts and different chapters. Uh, we're not going to be talking about the day of Pentecost. This is uh, a little while later after the Holy Ghost has actually come down the first time in Jerusalem during the Pentecost. And I want to read you this in chapter uh, 8, starting with verse 14. And it says this, Now the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. So they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as of yet, he had not fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So a little background on this that you must remember uh, is that persecution is really going strong in Jerusalem. Uh, this is where the church is being basically established. And after Pentecost, uh, the day of Pentecost, thousands actually came, believed on Jesus, and were baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they were just baptized in water. So thousands of them were. And remember, these were all Jewish people. Uh, as a whole that we, we, we think of and know of, they were all Jews, uh, because uh, the Jews believed and knew, uh, according to God's word, they were the chosen people. They were the seed of Abraham, and that was part of the covenant. It was to the Jews, uh, and we do know that that will change. So, uh, at this same time, a man named Saul has been given permission from the church, uh, not not the Christian church, but the Jewish church temple, uh, that he had authority to do what he really wanted to with any Christian that he found worshiping uh, God. So at this time, we read uh, in the first uh, part of this chapter, we, we find out and read about a man named Stephen, uh, the first martyr who was actually killed for the gospel. And uh, actually Saul stood there and gave his approval for them to stone him and to kill him uh, for the gospel's sake, because they wanted him to hush up and quit preaching the gospel. So that was happening. Uh, Paul Saul was throwing people in prison, men and women, whoever he could find openly uh, confessing Jesus Christ and, and having meetings, they would throw him in prison. So... A man named Philip now, one of the apostles, he goes down into Samaria. And uh, so many others are scattering out of Jerusalem because of the persecution. If you remember, Jesus told his disciples when he ascended back into heaven, he says, once you're endued with power from on high, which was the Holy Ghost, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, do it in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, the whole earth. He said, preach the gospel. And so, God, don't ever think that God does not allow uh, things to happen. I'm not saying he does them, uh, but he just allows uh, things to happen in a person's life that will cause them to be where they need to be. And I think about that many times about the young boy, Joseph, uh, you know, as he started out in his life and had a good big family and loving life and, and let, yet God let thing after thing happen to him and he put him somewhere completely uh, away from his family and his family as a whole, his father thought he was dead. But God had all this orchestrated because he had a job for Joseph to do. And so here he is making sure the people quit just staying in Jerusalem only. They've got to scatter. 
And the, by doing that, then the gospel will start going out more and more. So Philip is there. Philip starts preaching the word of God. And through his preaching, many, many in the city, the city, the Bible basically says the city come alive. And they are hearing this about Jesus Christ. And they're clamoring to come to hear Philip. And as they are receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior, Philip is taking them down and baptizing them uh, in, in the, under Jesus' name. So word gets back to Jerusalem. And uh, when they're coming back, and they said, this is happening in Samaria. Remember, Samaria is basically a Gentile uh, state and nation as a whole. And uh, the Jews had nothing to do with Gentiles. They stayed away from them. They had business dealings with them in, a, in some ways. They would not go in their houses. They would, uh, they, they would just consider themselves to be unclean to even be near and dealing with Gentiles. So when the word came back that Philip is preaching the word to Gentiles, Gentiles are receiving it and being baptized. Uh, they say something wrong with this picture. So they send Peter and John down to Samaria to verify that what is happening. And when they get there, they actually see and they understand. They don't understand all of it, but they see what truly is happening. And they have been baptized unto Jesus Christ, but what they had not uh, received yet was the Holy Ghost. So the Bible tells us, so in those verses, he said that Peter and John, when they got there, and these people started to keep coming and gathering, they laid hands on them. And when they laid hands on them, they each one received the Holy Ghost in their life. And uh, there's more story there about a man named Simon and some other things going on. But the, the great thing is God is doing a work starting among the Gentiles. And that's what he's doing here at this time. I want to read you out of uh, chapter 10 in Acts. It says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now, uh, again, we don't have time to go back into all of the story, but this, where Peter is at, is in a house of a man named Cornelius, who is a Gentile. I think he's, in fact, I believe he's a centurion. And uh, he's a good, devout man who's always believed in God, but does not know all the details. He just worshiped. He builds, he actually has helped the Jews uh, build uh, houses and things like that and temples. And uh, all of the people in his house were good people. So God sent, told him, send uh, for this man named Peter. Now Cornelius didn't know who Peter was. Meantime, God is doing a work in Peter, showing him that what God has made clean, do not call unclean. Because they, again, were separated from the Gentiles. They were certain foods, especially. They would not eat, would not touch. And God kept putting this vision before Peter. He said, rise up and eat. Uh, when he's showing this vision of these foods. And he said, no, Lord, I will not eat anything unclean. And God kept telling him, do not call anything unclean that I say is clean. So the men show up. Peter goes with them. And he is very apprehensive at first to go into this man's house because that, that was a no-no uh, under the Jewish law that he should even do that. So where I read you that, uh, in that first verse there in verse 44, Peter starts explaining to them about Jesus Christ. And it doesn't wait till the sermon is over. It doesn't uh, continue till uh, he has an altar call. It says, while the word was being preached, the Holy Ghost came down then, and every one of them in the house, uh, his guards, his servants, his family, Cornelius, all of them received the Holy Ghost. And um, so when that is over with and stopped, then Peter says, let's baptize you. And so he baptized all of them. And that became a great controversy also uh, back in Jerusalem when they heard that Peter was actually baptizing Gentiles 
and all this stuff that's going on. It became a big uh, controversy for a while until Peter actually later on got back to Jerusalem and he says, I'm telling you, it happened here in Cornelius' house exactly how it happened on the day of Pentecost. They did receive the Holy Ghost. I did baptize them with God's blessing. And so from that time on, uh, the church, uh, and, and we'll say the church headquarters, so to speak, was in Jerusalem, started uh, accepting this more and more. I want to read one more real quick. Uh, that, hold on a second here. This is in chapter 19. And uh, it's talking about disciples receiving the Spirit. And I'm just going to read you one or two verses. It says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. Now, it's not 100% sure. He is taking for granted when he meets these people that these are Christians. And these Christians say, yes, we've been baptized. Thing was, they were not Christians. And how do we know they weren't Christians? They believed uh, on what John the Baptist has said. They believed on Jesus Christ. And so uh, Paul, now you got to remember, long time has passed. Paul has been converted. Uh, he now is an apostle and preaching. Uh, one who used to persecute the church is now building the church. And so when he got there, he asked him, he says, have you yet received the Holy Ghost? And uh, they told him, said, we don't even know of anything called the Holy Ghost. Never heard of it. And then he finds out that when they were baptized, they were baptized unto John the Baptist. Not saying these people were sinners or anything. They were doing what they knew to do. And But being baptized unto John the Baptist... Uh, was not fully uh, them understanding what being a full Christian was. So Paul, first of all, baptizes them uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he lays hands on them. And these few, I think it was like 12 of them, uh, the Holy Ghost came upon. And you can read so many stories in the Bible how Paul helped build a mighty church in Ephesus and throughout all those regions because people believe because God was doing a work. And uh, so I know a lot of people still disagree today. So, well, that Holy Ghost was a time past, but I find nowhere in the Bible that it ever says that uh, once the apostles goes away, the Holy Ghost goes away because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one and they are always here. Y'all have a blessed day. Amen.